Hey, I'm working on a pair of 06 4.0 single overhead cam forward heads. I've already done a three angle valve job, valve guides, and I surfaced them. I faced these valves, I got some new seals, got its springs all cleaned up and tested. I'm getting ready to assemble it. Hey everybody, happy Thursday, how we doing? Hey, if you own one of these single overhead cam 4 liter engines, in, in your Rangers or Explorers, uh, to put them in Mustangs, sell the car. If you're going to buy one, don't do it. It's a bad, bad design. Let me show you why. Why do I say this is a bad design? There's four chains in the timing system. The bottom chain runs a balance shaft that's bolted to the bottom of the block. That cuts down the harmonics and vibrations. Then it has another chain that runs up to a jack shaft. So the, the driver's side cam is ran by a chain with a tensioner and rails. Um, there's tensioner and rails down here, and there's a jack shaft that runs the passenger side cam from the rear with another tensioner, as well as a bunch of rails. The, the, the rails break, uh, it's just a mess. None of the gears have uh, pins or dowels or any kind of alignments. They're all friction fit by torque. It's a bad design. So generally, uh, what happens on that engine is you have a timing failure, and it's the rear chain for some reason, the rear tensioner. It, uh, fails and the rails bust and you have to remove the engine or the transmission to get at that timing in the back So bad bad design. Sorry. Sorry you Ford fans, but I'm just telling you how it is I I see a lot of different engines and I'm gonna tell you about all of them. I don't think are very good. So Don't don't have this one. It does make good power. It's got decent sized valves and uh, it's a good engine If they would have just designed that timing a little differently. I don't know why they had to run it out the back like that Engineers, I guess Hey, uh, I didn't have time to film yesterday you know, I do spend a lot of time filming my videos for you guys, and I, obviously I can't film everything I do, so. But I'll assemble them for you here on this video. Uh, hey, let's check that surface finish and see how I did, on, okay, with my propolometer. This is a propolometer. It's made by Sunnen, and it has a probe on the end here, and it rides across the head and measures the peaks and the valleys, the roughness average of the finish. So let's check them. Watch this probe. 13. Let's check the other one. It might not be exactly 13. Could be 14 or 15. Maybe even 12. It was 12. <laughs> Gasket recommenders are just all over the place on what they recommend. You know, around 35 or less. The lower the number, the smoother the finish. So that's an excellent finish on these. Hey, you like my AC behind me? <laughs> Both these heads appear identical. There's a port here. They put a freeze plug in that one. But if you get to this head, tensioners on the front on this one and the boss is on this one but they didn't drill and tap it watch out for that if you're buying a core okay, these heads run a hydraulic lifter so they're non adjustable so I have to set the height of the valves with my stem height gauge okay, these heads aren't as clean as I usually get them because I couldn't glass beat them because they have blind holes and the glass beater gets stuck down at the end and, and just destroy the engine so I got them as clean as I could and it'll operate just fine they're just not as you know good looking as I usually make them Let's set that stem pipe down. Okay, I'm just gonna put these in dry. Obviously, I'll use oil on the final assembly. Let's measure it. The gauge is made by Fowler, and it's got a little plunger up inside that the valve pushes on, and it reads. It also has a standard to check it. This is set at an inch and a half. You see there, it's right on the zero. So it just goes over the valve. We're looking for 5680. There we got uh, 86. So I got to grind 6 thousandths off this. Do that here in my Sioux grinder on this end down here. So the valve goes in here and I tighten this down. And then there's a, a knob here that I turn that reads in thousandths and I'll grind it into the wheel. So let's turn it on. That looked pretty cool, didn't it? Hey, <laughs> that wasn't his valve, that was a Toyota valve. Let me do his now. Look at that, right on 80. Okay, now let me set all them heights. So I've been a machinist over 45 years. I did this in less than six seconds. 
Okay, everything's adjusted. I've kept the valves in order. I've got the seals ready to go on them. Now we're going to put some oil on the stems. I put oil right on the keeper groove, put it in the guide, spin it. Okay, they're all oiled, time to put on the seals. Don't ever set a head down on its surface. We'll scratch it. So I put oil on top of the guide. Now these didn't go all the way down, so I'm just pushing them down with a socket here. You don't usually go on that easy, you usually have to tap them, but there's nothing wrong with it, the springs will hold them down. I'm going to put them together in my head machine. So i got to put this tool I made in it. And that'll depress the valve. I hope when I depress that valve, it won't need therapy afterwards. <laughs> so I'll be setting that down on this cardboard in my head machine. When I put this in that machine, that valve will just go down and it'll be hard to get the spring on. Good thing for me, I won big on the craps table the other night. So let's just jam these in here. That'll keep the valves from opening. Okay, the second one. Hey, I wanted to show you these before I put these last two together. These are cut at a taper, an angle, so that they seat onto there and hold them in. They're seven degrees.
hey, before we have a look at these, I'm going to put this heat tab on there. The center of it will melt out if it gets to 250 degrees. Then I'll know they overheated it. So I just put a little bit of this special adhesive on here. And I just glue it onto the water somewhere. That's a good spot. And this head. Then I had a custom stamp made. Stamp all of our work. And one on this head. Here we go. All ready for the customer. Actually, now they're done. Something leaves this shop, it's clean, and I hope the customer keeps it clean. Cleanliness is very important when assembling engines and doing any kind of work on your vehicle, whether it be wheel bearings or anything. A little bit of grit will just destroy your whole project, no matter how good the work was performed. Hey, thanks for coming along, you guys. Come back and see me again, okay? And please, be nice to each other. Bye.